Nicole Smith. And Steve Keim from Blood and Iron Martial Arts. Today we'd like to introduce you to our mixed weapon series of videos, where we take two weapon sets, put them together, and show you how they can defeat each other. For today's video, we're going to focus on longsword versus sword and buckler from early German period. We're going to show you the pros and cons of each, and we're going to give you some ideas about how one can gain advantage over the other. Now the most obvious advantage we have in longsword is reach. Even though I have two hands on my weapon, I can reach him long before he can reach me. One of the other advantages I have with a longsword is I have two hands on my sword to his one on his. This allows me to generate more power and blow through his defense. And now the cons. First and foremost, the longsword is only one weapon versus the sword and buckler's two weapons, which means that my longsword has to do two jobs at once, attacking and defending. That's why the manuscripts heavily referenced master cuts, which allow just that, attack and defense simultaneously. Another con to discuss is in close fighting. A practitioner who is inexperienced or has a less developed sense of body awareness or timing or an inability to use the false edge will have a much more difficult time with an in-close opponent. In this situation, the longsword's length becomes a pro and a con. Let's start with the most obvious pro. I have two to his one. And one of the nice things about this is I can decide how to use them. I can have them both attack. I can use them both to defend. Or I can assign them separate jobs. There's really no end to the combinations you can use these with. From an instructional standpoint, it is much easier to teach someone to defend with a buckler than with a longsword. This means that a very new practitioner can become moderately skilled with a sword and buckler faster than a longsword practitioner. As previously mentioned, the longsword has the reach advantage, meaning my arming sword being shorter will be at a disadvantage. So my first priority is to get past the tip of my opponent's sword. If I don't, I'm in for a very bad day. So once I remove the tip from being pointed at me, I want to quickly get close to my opponent where I have the advantage in close quarters. The next con we're going to address is defending against longsword attacks. Under ideal circumstances, I'm going to want to use both my sword and buckler at the same time to defend incoming strikes from a longsword. But what happens if my weapons become isolated? Either through my opponent's actions or my own inexperience, I'm now vulnerable. To mitigate this, I want to position my body, bring my weapons together so that I can adequately defend myself at all times. Practicing with mixed weapons is a great fun way to challenge yourself and also learn to employ techniques in a different environment. Today's video series was a request from our viewers. Thank you for the inspiration and keep those suggestions coming. We hope you liked today's video. If you did, please like and subscribe. And as always, a big thank you to our Patreon supporters. Without you, this wouldn't be possible. If you enjoy the content we produce and want to join one of our live online classes, please click the link below. And remember, if you don't put in the training, you won't get the result.